Well, hello everyone, my name is Wigo and welcome back to another video. Today we're taking on Small Ant's ROM hack, where he played through the game, but every time he enters a new battle, his team gets randomized. But we're not doing it regularly, we're adding hardcore Nuzlocke rules to it. So, one battle we could have a Mewtwo, and the next one we could have a team full of Caterpies. Which means that we're going to need a lot of luck if we're going to want to beat this game. For the people that don't know what a hardcore Nuzlocke is, I'll go over the rules really quickly. I can only capture the first Pokemon on every route. Once a Pokemon faints, it's dead and I can't use it ever again. I must be on set mode at all times and I can't use any items in battle. If you want to try this challenge for your own, I will leave Smallland's video in the description. And if you join his Discord server, you can download it from there. Before we jump into the video, let's try to smash 5,000 likes, and if you haven't subscribed already, do that as well. And with all of that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Emerald, but we're randomizing our team every battle. As I fuse myself and Small Ant together, I name my character Zwant. And it doesn't really matter what starter Pokemon I pick, so I go with Trico, but he immediately turns into Slowpoke in the first battle. No problem, as we can still tackle our way through the Zigzagoon, and name our first Pokemon Fred, as this is the only indication to recognize one of our Pokemon, since they will be different every battle. We get very lucky by getting a Kangaskhan in the first fight versus May and her Torchic, so we just Comet Punch it and take it down. We go back to the lab, get ourselves some Pokeballs or Pokedex and start catching some Pokemon on the early routes, like the boy and Edwin. Also pretty cool to see Wally Zigzagoon being changed to an Elekid but still keeping the name Zigzagoon. I guess they kinda look alike since they both have a striped pattern. There's not much more to do so we just scour the routes for the rest of the Pokemon that we can capture, add them to the team, grind them up and challenge Roxanne. If you just get like a ground type, grass type, steel type or a water type, this gym will be a piece of cake. And the first Pokemon I managed to get is a swine up with Powder Snow, which is super effective on both of her Geodudes, so we take them out with that. But then her Nose Pass comes out, and I don't really want Arts to die. So I check my team and see that I have an Aeron in there, swap them in, and since Nose Pass only has not very effective moves, we just Metal Claw it a couple of times and win our first Gym Batch. Easy as that. The Aqua Grunt was also no problem to beat, and as we save Pico, we get ourselves a free boat ride to Dewford Town. But not before we take on May. I actually have a very good team to take on May, as I swap in my Puchiena, but he has Poison Fang, which is a move that he normally doesn't learn. As it turns out, some of the Pokemon have more coverage moves, so that you don't have to deal with really bad movesets because they only have the moves that they learn at that level normally. But with this Fang of Poison, we can two-shot Lotad, and as Torchic comes in, I go into Fred the Squirtle. With Water Guns, we easily take out the Fire Chicken, take our boat ride up the Granite Cave, and get the HM for Flash, because I was thinking HMs might be a problem, but we just have to keep randomizing until we can use all of them in, like, Victory Road or something. Once I'm done in the cave, capturing a Zubat and giving the letter to Steven, we immediately head on over to Brawly. And this battle was actually pretty easy, as we get a Zapdos on our team. And since I'm not really allowed to reset my team, I'm just gonna roll with it. And there's also a Regirock sitting in the back. But he might get punched or rubble by his Makuhita. So I swap out my Kecleon for Zapdos immediately and Peck and Thundershock the matchup, Thundershock the Meditite twice, and then Peck and Thundershock the Makuhita twice to all take them out and sweep his entire team. They really plan on getting a Legendary this early, so let's hope that they don't run out by the end of the game. Because we're gonna need them because I can feel a team full of Magikarps being right around the corner. We didn't go and deliver the Devon goods, but as a kid, I was always stuck here because I could not find the guy that I would have to give it to. Luckily, now I know everything about Pokemon Emerald. So once we clear out the museum of these nasty pirates, we move along the route and find Mei. And our team to take her on with is not looking too amazing, as I swap in Exeggutor, against their Wingull. I know this is probably not the best matchup, but Exeggutor is pretty bulky, so he could definitely take a few hits. But since he got confused by Supersonic and hit himself in its confusion a couple of times in a row and got hit with wing attacks, I had to get them out of there quicker than you could say. 
Lechonk Supremacy. I bring out Dustox's Confusion that Wingle three times in a row, but also get hit with wing attacks, leaving me with 22 HP as he then sends out Combuskin. Luckily, we have the thickest boy of them all on the team, Whalmer, and with just a couple of water guns, we can also take out KFC Chicken. With Lombre being the last Pokemon, I go into Aeron, since I know this thing doesn't have any water type moves, and with a couple of Hitmuts and a Rock Tomb, we easily win our May battle. We say goodbye to Michael Scott and Wally and step through the electric field to take on Uncle Iroh. Our team is definitely not looking great as we have a cast form and an anon on there, but we're still going to try and win. The battle doesn't start off great as I go with uproar from our Vigoroth, but his Voltorb has soundproof which cancels it out. I then scratch it a couple of times, bring it down into red health, he wastes a potion and I finally swap out. And bring in Magmar and with a single fire punch, Voltorb goes down. Electrike takes two fire punches, Magneton being weak to fire only takes one, and Manectric actually survives three fire punches to the face and paralyzes me. And once I got hit with a couple of those shockwaves, I know the boy wasn't going to survive the next one. So I brought in Erwin and tried to go for a rock tomb but miss and I get paralyzed by Thunder Wave. Next turn he goes for a shockwave, gets a critical hit and one shots my lair on. I know, not the best feeling ever but we finally got our first death. You will be remembered Fallen Conrad. Then I bring in Sudowodo and I'm only able to hit two rock throws because I get paralyzed again and then I have to swap out because I got hit with too many shockwaves. Castform, the most useless Pokemon, finally makes itself useful by tanking two shockwaves and then taking out Manectric with Powder Snow. And it has 69 HP. Nice. We then traverse all of the routes and find ourselves a shiny Soul Rock. And I had absolutely no idea that shiny Soul Rock looks this cool. So I captured it, hoping that every Pokemon that it would turn into would be shiny. But that, sadly enough, was not the case. So kind of a wasted shiny, but that does mean that if I send out my Pokemon, it always has a chance to be shiny, right? So let's hope we are still going to see a shiny sparkle. But first, let's stop Big Red Man from making a volcano erupt. We get a Lugia on the team, which is not going to be useful against this Mydiena, but maybe against some of his other Pokemon. First, I bring out Kangaskhan against Mydiena. And of course, Mega Punch isn't Mega Punch without it missing a couple of times. Once that's done though, I still two-shot the Mydiena with it, but we still took about half of our health and damage from Bites. Luckily for us, he just has a very weak Zubat next, so we bring in Hound Doom and Ember it. And that's it, Zubat is down and out. Last Pokemon, Camerupt. I first go into Golbat, but as it turns out, it doesn't have any water type moves, so I just scratch him until he's down into orange health. Then as Golduck is about to die, I swap in Fred the Lugia. And I absolutely love that it has black scales in this game. This is the only game I believe it has black scales in as well. But once we're done admiring Lugia's aesthetic, it's time to take out camera with a bunch of gusts. Speaking about legendary Pokemon, what game are you going to pick up, Scarlet or Violet? After I've seen the newest trailer, I'm definitely picking up Pokemon Scarlet. Look at this legendary, it is top tier and I absolutely love it. But enough simping over Pokemon that don't exist yet. Let's see if we can go and take on the next gym leader, Flannery. We just need a ground or a water type and we should be fine, maybe a rock type in there as well. And what do we get? Nothing of the sword. And a why not, which is useless. First, our Delcaddy comes up against Numo. I do a couple of faint attacks and double slaps, but ultimately get left with 2 HP after an overheat and a wasted potion. So I bring in Kerman the Golbat after that and wing attack that Numo to take it out. Slugma is up next, and two wing attacks do the trick again. But then he brings out Camerupt. I hit one more wing attack, doing a decent amount of damage, but an overheat brings me down to 6 HP so I can bring in Arcanine. It might not be the best choice because this thing has magnitude, but I do have an Intimidate on it now, so it will do less damage. I bite it once, then get attracted. Don't hit it for a couple of turns in a row, but ultimately my takedown manages to finish it off. The final Pokemon on our team is going to be Torkoal, I hit two takedowns and a bite on the big turtle, but then an overheat somehow takes me out from half health. So I bring in Pikachu instead and try to take it out with Thunderbolt, but it brings it down into red HP and he heals up with a Hyper Potion. Luckily we managed to get a Paralysis on him, 
And the next turn he gets paralyzed and we can hit two thunderbolts and one of them was a critical hit but then he hits an overheat getting a critical hit as well and taking revenge on my Pikachu by taking him out. This was also the shiny Soul Rock, so I'm pretty sad about losing him. I then make a very big mistake by going into Ninjask without checking its moves and since it only has Fury Cutter it doesn't take out Torkoal and Ninjask unnecessarily dies to Overheat. I then do what I should have done in the first place, bringing Golbat and take it out with a Wing Attack. That way we get our fourth Gym Badge but we also lose half of our team. Luckily we still have a bunch of Pokemon in the box to replace them with. But now it's time to arguably take on an even harder gym leader, Norman, with a slacking. We do get a pretty good team with a Latios on it as well as a Claydol, but the rest of the team is pretty mediocre, except for the boy Quagsire. First thing I do is spam Psybeam with Claydol on his Spinda. Five of them and it's down after he wastes a potion on him. Since the next Pokemon is Vigoroth, I bring in Quagsire since it's pretty bulky and takes two slashes to the face pretty well, but one of them is a critical hit and brings me down to red HP. Luckily, we counter back with a critical hit Mud Shot to take out Vigoroth ourselves. He then brings out Linoon, so I swap in Seedra, but we get critical hit again by Headbutt. I then have to bring out our legendary Latios, and luckily on that turn the Linoon used Belly Drum, which cuts its HP in half and that brings it into range for my Latios to one-shot it with Dragon Breath. I then Dragon Breath, de slacking, swap out into some Flora because I got Yawned and I don't want my Latios to fall asleep, then once some Flora gets Yawned as well, I swap back out into Latios, Dragon Breath the slacking and take it out without taking any damage of it. That's not something you see every day. We then do Watson side quest by going to New Mauville and capturing Stool the Magnemite. Stool meaning chair in Dutch. And that's your Dutch word for the day. We get ourselves the HM for Serve, our fifth gym badge, and make our way through the dense jungle before reaching the Weather Institute. Shelly tries to hold us up, but since she only has two Pokemon, it was no problem taking her out and moving on to Mei immediately. But since our first Pokemon is immediately a Gardevoir, we just Psychic Pelipper, Psychic Combuskin, and Psychic Facade Lombre to take out Mei without any problems. We get the ability to fly from her, which we are going to need if we want to reach for the stars. But first we have to catch what we can't see, and once we've done that, we take on Wynona. With a pretty decent team of a Skarmory, a Galele, a Torkoal and a Solrock, I don't think this should be any problem. So I started off with Skarmory, but I swapped out into Solrock on her Swablu immediately and took it out with only two rock throws. Her flying Bananasaurus then comes out, so I go into Skarmory as it has nothing to hit me with, and two flies easily take care of it. With Pelipper being the next Pokemon and Delcaddy conveniently having Shockwave, I just take it out with only two of those. I hit the Skarmory with four Shockwaves in a row and also make her use another potion, but as my little cat is once again left with only 2 HP, I send out Torkoal and burn it to a crisp with Overheat. With Altaria being her last Pokemon and I having an Ice type on the team, I just Icy Wind it twice in a row and win my 6th Gym Badge. Because of my Icy Wind it got pretty chilly in there so I got out of there. Went to the spooky Mount Pyre and captured the scariest Pokemon ever, Larry. We get some empty threats from Archie at top of Mount Pyre as well, but we just disregard those and do the thing what I like to do most, shopping. May here has a Bananasaur of her own, but we have a Flygon as our first Pokemon, starting off great. And we also have a Ninetales, Rapidash and an Exploud, so we should be good for the entirety of this battle. I bring in our nine tails against the Tropius and overheat it once. For Combuskin, I go back into our Flygon and with only three Dragon Breaths, we got ourselves some nice chicken tenders. Speaking of birds, here comes Pelipper, so our Exploud's takedowns overpowered the big seagull and the last Pokemon on her team is a Ludicolo. So I bring out the only thing that makes sense here, Flygon, Dragon Breath and crunch it until it's down and out. And that's the last time we see Mei for a battle. We all know what's next, time to go into a very, very hot mountain and fight a bunch of grown-ups in costumes. At the heart of the volcano we find Maxi talking to what seems like a big rock, but as it turns out it's just an ancient dinosaur that doesn't really want to be here. Since Maxi doesn't really look too happy, he decides to take out his anger on me and Fred. 
Fred is our Snorlax, and he gets swaggered by my Tiena and all the way put down into red health by hitting himself in its confusion and getting hit by takedowns. Don't be like Fred. Be like Kerman, our Registeel, who with 3 attack boosts still couldn't take down my Jena as he swaps out into Camerupt as I'm about to finish him off. I know I can't take an Earthquake from this thing, so I go into Quagsire instead. Luckily for us, Quagsire has Surf and that one-shots the Camel. He then sends out his Majina again, I know I could have stayed in here, but I go into Scissor instead, get hit with a Swagger, hit myself in my Confusion, and the turn after, our Silverwind takes down the Hyena. With the last Pokemon being Crobat, I swap out Registeel again, and with only 3 Ancient Powers, we take care of Maxi and get out of that volcano because I need a drink. But instead of a drink, I got two twins in my face who wanna ruin my life. And as they have a Claydol and also a Zatu, we get ourselves a Rayquaza, a Flygon, a Machamp, an Azumarill, and a Mr. Mime. Oh, and also Masquerade, who's probably not going to be that useful. What I'm trying to say is, this team will wreck them. I first double up with the Facade and an Ancient Power on the Zatu, taking it down into red health. The Claydol then hits my Mescarane with an Ancient Power himself and also gets the boost from it, which is really not what we need. I then bring in Machamp for Mascarane, hit the Zatu with a Crunch, and then predict that the Claydol is going to go for a Psychic on my Machamp, so I swap out into Misper Mime, but he goes for Earthquake and does quite a lot of damage. But we also managed to take out Zatu with Crunch from Rayquaza. I decide to go into Flygon to take an Earthquake with its Levitate, and then double up with Crunch on Lunatic to take it out. Rayquaza also got hit with Psychic, but it didn't even do half, so I'm not too worried. I then once again double up Crunch on their final Pokemon, Solrock, and also take it out, but Flygon gets hit with a Psychic and is only left with 59 HP. This causes me to swap out again into Azumarill, and as I hit some Crunches and Surfs, the Claydol sets up a light screen, which means that my attacks barely do anything anymore. Azumarill also almost dies from two Psychics, so I go into Machamp hoping that it goes for Earthquake, but it went for Psychic, once again bringing me down into red health. And since I got the Claydol back down into red health again, they healed it up once more. I bring in Masquerade for the Machamp after that, but a Psychic takes down Violet. So I try to get my revenge with Rayquaza by hitting it with another Crunch and bringing in Mr. Mime, but they heal it up again. I then hit two more crunches after that, and the Claydol finally goes down, but Rayquaza almost fell to another Psychic. This battle could have gone catastrophically wrong if I did not have Rayquaza on the team. All because that Claydol got the boost of Ancient Power at the start of the battle. We hear some rockets outside and see that the rocket at the space station is about to take off, and some Team Magma members are running towards it. This can't be any good, so as we walk in, we see that Steven is fighting the Admin and Maxi. As the good kid that we are, we're going to try and help him though. Since it doesn't really matter which Pokemon we pick, because they get randomized anyway, we see that we bring out a Primeape and <laughs> Steven brings out an Unknown as his first Pokemon. This isn't looking too great. We do get pretty lucky in our first turn though, taking out my Jenna with a single Karate Shop from Primeape. As I look in the back of my team, I see that I have a Glalie and a Seeking as well. So I bring in the Glalie to match the Crobat and try to take it out with some kind of Ice Attack. We also see that Steven here is going to have a Dustox and a Dodrio. Luckily my Glalie has Ice Beam and that way we can one-shot the Crobat. But now we're up against two Camerupts, so I have to go into my Seeking. I try to swamp the battlefield with some Surfs and eventually take down one of the camera ups and he then brings out Golbat and Steven's unknown finally goes down which means he's going to bring out a far more useful Pokemon, Dustox. Luckily we take down the camera up and the Golbat pretty quickly with Surfs and Hydro Pumps and the final Pokemon we face is Mightyena. Just a single Hydro Pump from Seeking and they are down and out which means that we've defeated Team Magma. Let's go under the sea, find ourselves the seafloor cavern, and see what the pirates are up to. They're trying to resurrect a statue of a fish. I guess everybody has their own hobbies. I'm more of a dog person myself. Once I said those words, Archie got pretty mad, which means that it's Morbin time. We got an okay team on our hands with a Kingler, Arcanine, Shiftry, Ursaring, Houndoom, and a Fero. And as I thought that I was only going to need Kingler to take down this Mightyena and the rest of his Pokemon, 
I get roared out after being at plus 3 in attack. I did manage to get the Mytiana down into red health, but Firo was able to do the rest of the work with a drill peck. It's then flying type versus flying type, and as I drill peck the crowback two times in a row, I then start hitting myself in my confusion, which means that Firo is not gonna live for too much longer if I let him stay in here. So I bring in my big bear, Ursaring, and with a slash, Crobat finally bites the dust. Sharpedo then enters the room and I swap out into Shiftree. Only two rock tombs later and we have defeated Archie and we all know that that means the end of the world as Groudon and Kyogre fight over who's the better legendary. We all know it's Groudon but let's just roll with that Rayquaza is the best legendary and he saves us all. Since we rescued the world from certain doom we finally get the opportunity to test our worth against the final gym leader, Juan. We get a decent team here with a Scizor, Crowdaunt, Grumpig, but most importantly, a Sceptile and a Sunflora, two grass types coming in clutch. I start off with Scizor, but swap out into Sceptile immediately and Leaf Blade Love Disc. I then also Leaf Blade Celio, but he survives, hits me with an Aurora Beam, and does quite a lot of damage. I do know that it's going to heal up next, so I just hit another Leaf Blade, and this time we get a high roll to take out the big Sea Lion. I know Kingdra has Ice Beam, so I swap out into Crawdaunt, and this Mighty Lobster was able to hit two strengths, but that's about it. Then I swapped out into my little piggy, Fred. Set up a couple of Calm Mines and started psychicking away. The Kingdra kept on healing up with rest, which was not good for my cause, but ultimately I was powered up so much that it couldn't handle my psychics anymore, and it finally fell. This forced her into Crawdaunt, which I couldn't hit with Grumpig, so I got into my Scizor, Fury Cutter that Crawdaunt four times in a row, and that means that my Fury Cutter is powered up so much that it's also able to cut and slice through the final Pokemon Wishcash. Final gym badge in the pocket, let's go to Victory Road, take on Wally, and then see what we can do against the Elite Four champion, and then maybe another battle after that if we manage to reach it. We definitely don't get the best team against Wally, but it's also not the worst, with a Tauros, a Rapidash, a Nosepass, and a Starmie thrown in there. First it's Yanma against Altaria, and I don't really think this is a good matchup, so I go into Nosepass instead. Nosepass gets the Altaria down into red health with Rock Slides two times in a row, but then has to swap out because he's paralyzed and only has 8 HP left. Luckily we still have Tauros on the team, and with only two pursuits we take out Altaria as well. Tauros takes down Delcata with thrashes, but Magneton then hits me very hard with a Thunderbolt, and I have to get out of there after my thrash ends. Fred the Rapidash hits two flame wheels and takes out the magnets, but also gets hit with thunderbolts, leaving him with only 19 HP. And even though he brings out a Roselia, I still am not going to take the risk here and swap out Rapidash for Yanma. After spamming Aerial Ace for a couple of turns, it eventually goes down and the final Pokemon we have to face is Gardevoir. We still have Starmie in the back and because this Gardevoir can't really hit me, I decide to go into it and hit two more Hydro Pumps to finally take out Wally and make our way over to Sydney, the first Elite Four member. To take on Sid, we were not really dealing with an optimal team here, but I still have a Survivor in the back which I take out of my pocket and then smack the Mygena with. Once Mygena is down, he makes the mistake of bringing in Shiftry, which we also one-shot with Poison Fang. But not after hitting ourselves in our confusion after a swagger. We also one-shot Cacturn. Crawdon sets up a Swords Dance as I miss my Poison Fang. So I bring in Lugia, but we get critical hit with a strength doing more than half of my health. So I swap out Lugia for, for Delibird after missing a Hydro Pump, which means the Crawdaunt was able to set up two more Swords Dances. So this Crawdaunt is at plus six. I hit one facade with Delibird, but then get destroyed by a Strength. I then bring in Sandslash and he goes down pretty quickly as well by a Strength and a Surf. But he did manage to bring down the Crawdaunt into Orange Health. We do still have Claydol in the back, so after bringing him out, we finally take out this Crawdon with an Earthquake, and then Absol by spamming Earthquake as well. Losing two of our Pokémon and the first Elite Four member 
is not good because now we have to do the rest of the league with only four Pokemon. The next battle is against Phoebe and luckily for us we get a Hound Doom for our team. He was able to take out the first Dusclops with only two feint attacks. I know that the second Dusclops has Earthquake, so I bring in another Pokemon on the team, Gorbis. He fills Dusclops' belly with water until he explodes by hitting it with two Hydro Pumps. And the rest of the team is a piece of cake by bringing in Houndoom again, feint attacking Beneath, and feint attacking and flamethrowing Sableye and then once again feint attacking the last Bennett to finally take down Phoebe and move over to Glacia. And we actually get a very very good team to take her on. We get a Venusaur, a Steelix, a Wishcash and also a Machamp. Definitely not complaining about that. So first we take out Celio by putting it to sleep with Sleep Powder and then taking it out with a Razor Leaf. The second Celio we take out the exact same way and then he brings out Walrein. So I decide to not take any risks and go into Machamp to finish it off with a single cross chop. Also taking two Ice Beams in the process and not being able to do anything else from here on. Except for take out another Glalie with cross chop because I managed to tank an Ice Beam with only 9 HP remaining. For the last Glalie, I decided to not take any more risks again. And two earthquakes of our Wishcast shook Glacia so hard that we took out Glalie and moved on over to Drake. And for Drake we got a powerhouse of a team, Rayquaza returning and also getting Raikou. Not that we're really going to need Raikou because we one shot Shellgon with the Dragon Claw, Altaria also gets one shot, then Flygon, guess what, also a one shot, but then Salaman survives a Dragon Claw and hits me back with the same, but he does a lot less damage than I do, and once he heals up I get a high roll and take it out. The final Pokemon Kingdra once again falls to a Dragon Claw, so let's see what we can do with Wallace after this beautiful sweep. Well we don't get an optimal team to take on Wallace, we do get two grass types with Fred and the boy as Venusaur and Cacturn, but we also get a Steelix and a Regirock, which are not going to be able to do much in this battle. But let's give it a shot anyway. If we lose here, we still made it to the end. And I think Lady Luck is on our side for this battle. I think I rolled a 777 at a casino because I managed to avoid two blizzards from Waylord and took it down with Needle Arms. Milotic was less forgiving though, only being able to hit one Needle Arm before going down to an Ice Beam and a Surf. Three Pokemon left. I go into Venusaur, put the Milotic to sleep with a Sleep Powder, but miss my first one so it's able to heal back up the full health. As it's asleep, I hit two Razor Leafs, Earthquake, and then finally take it out with a critical hit Razor Leaf. Tentacruel is up next, and I once again put it to sleep with Venusaur. I then Earthquake it three times in a row, and that's the big tent down. Wish Cash is no problem because Razor Leaf is four times super effective and once I'm done spamming it, it finally goes down because it set up an amnesia which meant that it took a little bit longer. For Gyarados, I do have a Regirock in the back, so first I put it to sleep with Venusaur again. Then I bring in Regirock and take it out with two Ancient Powers and also getting the boosts on my second one as we go into the final Pokemon, Ludicolo. Because of those boosts, I was able to throw those rocks even harder into Ludicolo's face and with only two more attacks, we win the battle against Wallace and become champion of the Kanto region with a randomized team in every single battle. But we still have one final ultimate battle to go. We have three Pokemon left and we still have a dozen in the PC, so let's take them out and try and take on Steven Stone, the real champion. We don't get the best team to take on Steven here as we have a Rhydon, a Misdreavus, a Torkoal, a Sudowoodo, a useless Dustox, but a Starmie as well, which could come in handy. First off, I swap out my Rhydon for Torkoal to take out Skarmory with a Flamethrower. He brings out Metagross, I go for another Flamethrower doing over half of his HP, but we get killed by an Earthquake and the Poison of the Toxic. We also manage to burn the Metagross, which does mean that it's not going to do as much damage to us anymore. I swap in Starmie and Hydro Pump that Metagross and it's down. We also Hydro Pump the next Pokemon, Agron, and that is a one-shot. For Cradley, I went into Misdreavus, put a Mean Lock on him, then a Perishong, and then 
finally, as it was about to take me out, I used Destiny Bond to take down my Misdreavus, but also that Cradley with me. That does mean that we lost another Pokemon, but this allows me to freely bring in Starmie, and he is able to Hydro Pump Claydol and Hydro Pump Armaldo to take out Steven Stone. And with that, we finally defeated this entire game, but don't get me wrong, this was not my first attempt. There is a reason why it took me so long to bring out this video, it's because I had to do so many attempts that I lost count. Not that I was really counting in the first place though. But this was really hard because I kept on getting really bad teams and losing at Flannery, the Elite Four, Tate and Liza, and sometimes Norman too. But ultimately, I managed to defeat this challenge and I'm pretty proud of that. I don't really recommend doing this yourself because it can get pretty brutal at some points. But I do want to give a big shout out to Small Ant for coming up with this ROM hack. With all of that out of the way, I of course also want to shout out my membership and Patreon supporters. If you want to do so yourself, it's always appreciated. And as always, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwego and I'll see you guys next time.